Let's talk about your genes. Your body is made up of trillions of cells. Each cell contains DNA. Organized neatly along all these spirals are thousands of shorter sections of DNA called genes. The mixture of genes passed down to you from your mum and dad decides what you look like and can even influence how your brain and body work. So maybe maths is your thing, or you can run really fast. Genes can also decide whether you're born healthy or with a disease. Scientists have now found a way of changing a human being's genes before they're even born. This is called genome editing or genetic modification. I'm Dr. Nora Fogarty and I'm a scientist at the Francis Crick Institute, which is the largest biomedical research institute in Europe. Currently in the UK, we're the only lab who has a license to use genome editing in human embryos. We are using genome editing as a tool to look at how different genes work in the human embryo in the first week of development. An embryo develops from a fertilized egg and will go on to form a baby. The embryos used in this research are just a few days old and made up of a tiny cluster of cells. The embryos that we use in our research are donated to us from couples who've undergone IVF and they have embryos that are left over. They don't need to use them anymore. Currently it's illegal in the UK to put any embryo that has been genome edited back into a woman to establish a pregnancy, so they're only allowed to be used in research. Scientists have created a way to make careful changes to genes that can affect how they work by removing and even replacing bits of DNA. Nora and her team are using this method to learn more about the earlier stages of a human embryo's development. But one day, it could have other uses too. It's also hoped that in the future, genome editing may be used to eradicate really serious diseases. But some people also have concerns that genome editing may be used to make what the media have called designer babies. So these would be babies that have been uh, created to have certain features, um, such as specific hair colour or eye colour. But currently, it's, it's illegal to do anything like that. How could this technology change the future of the human race? It's time to ask questions and think about what we want our future to look like. I'm Ella, I'm 18 years old and I have cystic fibrosis. The cystic fibrosis is where my lungs is clogged up with like mucus and my digestive system can't break down all the food. It makes it hard for me to breathe. Every day I have to take loads of different medications and different tablets. The average life expectancy is about 40, um, maybe 45, something along those lines. My mum's been there to help me start my life with CF and get me into my physio. My dad had lost a lung and he used to swim a lot. And I just thought, well, if dad can do it with only one lung. When I'm swimming, it feels like I'm free. Although I'm there swimming for my physio and for my CF, I'm there because I love it and I'm there because I enjoy it. In the future, parents could choose to genetically modify their children before they're born to prevent diseases caused by faulty genes like cystic fibrosis. I always wish that my parents had the choice because although CF has made me who I am, it would still be nice to be able to like, just think of a normal life Although I look really healthy, it's really hard to go day, like every day. If you were to ask any mother or any father of a child who lives with a terminal condition, 97% of them say, yes, go for it. It is a good thing. If you are, were to ask a member of the public who hadn't had that in their lives, maybe a 40, 50% split, if they've not had to live with somebody not knowing whether they're going to be alive the next morning when you go into their bedroom. At the end of the day, I wouldn't want to wish CF on anyone. But how do we decide if someone should be genetically modified or not? 
So that's my first camera. So I'm gonna change that. This is only my biggest lens ever. So that is my monster. When I got it, I thought, yes, I wanted a big lens like this. So my pictures at the moment are birds, water, trees. That's one of my favourites. The midwife who was delivering him thought everything was fine, there wasn't a problem. And it wasn't until the next day on the ward somebody announced that um, they felt 95% certain that my baby had Down syndrome. And I was absolutely devastated. And I envisaged an, an un unhappy life uh, and a life with a child that, that would never be happy. And very soon, you know, this, this blossoming, gorgeous, blue-eyed, blonde head, just gorgeous boy. <laughs> he really brought something tangibly valuable to our lives and, and he helped me look at things differently. He takes in and notices and brings to people attention beauty that we are not noticing and I think photography became something which enabled him to show the world what he sees and how he sees it. The fear about genetic modification is that once you start to decide that it's okay to alter people to make them in the way that a perceived few <laughs> decide would be better. You're heading down a dangerous road. If somebody came along with a magic wand and said to me, I could take Oliver's Down syndrome away, I would honestly, hand on heart, say, good heavens, no, why would I want that? Because if you took Oliver's Down syndrome away, he would be a completely different person. He has brought more colour <laughs> to my life and our lives than we could possibly have imagined. Some scientists are already thinking about new ways of preventing Down syndrome from developing in embryos. Others have begun thinking about preventing autism. I've heard it said before that messing around with science and particularly with embryos and the beginnings of life is playing God. I don't think we will ever be able to be God. But I think God has given scientists the brain and the ability to dream a dream of a world where diseases are eradicated. Within Christian belief, there would be a spectrum of understanding and a spectrum of belief about when life begins. Some Christians would say that that moment of conception that is a life. And, that, and actually, if you start messing around with that, you're actually murdering as strongly as that, that you are, you are murdering a life. For me, although life has begun, that life can't actually become anything until it is embedded in the womb of a woman. So the two things have to go together. DNA is our, it's, it's, it's like our instruction book. It's like the thing that, that makes us who we are. So if we're dealing with that initial contact, that very, very early stages, we need to still treat it with such care and respect because of all the potential that is contained within it. But contained within that is also the potential to make life a lot better for so many other people. This is Dr. David King. He was a genetic scientist, but now his mission is to warn people about the dangers of human genetic modification. There's all kinds of possibilities that scientists are interested in for how they so-called improve people. There's been a lot of interest on improving people's intelligence. There's interest in genes that make people more athletic, people can be taller and more beautiful. One thing uh, I think that's very possible is, of course, that that will be an expensive technology. Wealthy people will be more able to afford that technology. So you get very quickly into a two-tier society in which, for example, if you're part of that elite group, you'll have no interest in uh, getting married or having children with, with somebody who's not genetically enhanced like yourself. I first became concerned about uh, human genetics issues because of my background. I was brought up Jewish in the first half of the 20th century. The Nazis started deciding that certain kinds of human beings were superior to other human beings and we should get rid of those that are supposedly inferior. That's 
part of the history of genetics that casts a long shadow over what people are doing now. One can absolutely understand, you know, a parent wanting to uh, prevent their, their child from suffering. We've already seen how, for example, with, with, uh, with pharmaceutical drugs and with surgery, you have lots of doctors who uh, started off wanting to cure disease and now are making uh, lots of money through cosmetic surgery. Once you cross that crucial ethical line of not genetically interfering with our children, even for the best benevolent humanitarian reasons, you will almost inevitably end up in that world of designer babies and some people being judged as genetically inferior to other people. This is not some kind of scenario made up by a doom monger who wants to scare people. It's so fundamental a question. Everybody in society needs to be thinking about this right now. Can human beings be trusted to have so much power over one another? In the UK, any clinic or lab that wants to do any work on human embryos has to apply for a licence. And to get this licence, you need to um, fill out a load of paperwork to say exactly what you want to use the human embryos for. A committee made up of um, politicians, religious leaders, lawyers, just general people from the public will look at this and see if they think it's an appropriate way to use human embryos. So in the future, it'll be really hard for people to use genome editing to do anything that they want. And even apart from that, scientists, we aren't interested in that. We're interested in understanding the first few days of human development. And then also we're interested in helping to eradicate really, really serious diseases. It's only when you talk to people who have had experiences of these diseases that you would then find it really hard to say that it would not be good to use genome editing to stop people having to go through these life experiences. You will almost inevitably end up in that They've not had to live with somebody not knowing whether they're going to be alive Once next you start to decide that it's OK, is also the potential to, to make life oh, over, especially that my parents had the choice. Will genetic modification be good? or bad for the human race? What do you think? <laughs>